Hey, this is Stimming from Hamburg. Um, today I'm going to show you the Arturia Micro Freak, the new synth from uh, our French neighbors. It is a hybrid four voice paraphonic synth with an analog filter and um, a very different capacitive touch keyboard. It's very light, it weighs like one kilo. Um, let me show you a different machine. The first micro series, the micro brood is like twice as much maybe? I think so, maybe two kilo. Um, the Roland SH-01, which is about the same size, they're all the same size, just let me <laughs> put them all together. Yeah. Um, this one is 1.5 with the keyboard. So one kilo makes my life um, even lighter in uh, literally while traveling, right? So a hybrid synth means it's digital. There's a um, CPU in there, a, um, a DSP with uh, different synth models. The whole architecture basically is digital um, and the analog filter is the only real analog um, piece in there, but it's controlled digitally. So it's just a part of the whole patch, but um, there must be some kind of um, DA and AD conversion afterwards to um, um, send the signal through the filter and back out. But when I say paraphonic, it's not like totally true because it's even a bit further than the classic paraphony, which we know, um, because the envelopes are per voice still. So, um, for example, there's um, on, the, on the keyboard, there's this thing called pressure and this is really polyphonic, even if all the four voices go through just one filter, just to make this clear, kind of. Yeah, so let's switch it on. It's powered by USB, yeah, finally, and a completely standard, standard USB port, which I absolutely love. Um, there's a PSU connector with a very large and heavy PSU coming with it, which I don't understand, but there's a reason and I forgot. Um, USB means it can be powered, I power it to a um, power bank right now. Could be my phone, could be any USB um, power supply, which is perfect for traveling. Um, it makes our, all our lives a lot easier. If you start it, you've got 256 presets, um, which come up, the first sound you hear is... Wow! Didn't hear that. You hear the second one coming in? I didn't hear that, heard that before. Um, let me just try some presets, right? Classist. What comes to your mind immediately when you touch this keyboard um, is how snappy it is. It's so incredibly fast, the table seems to... Hmm, so sounds... Um, anyway. Um, it's incredibly fast. It's really, if, especially if you compare it to like this, those mini keys from the from the same um, from the, the same size of synths, and how plasticky they feel and cheap and I don't know. Um, you don't have any way to um, to finally get to some to the gate signal, right? It's immediately there. But even this, it's like. Fast. It's really. Let me have a fast attack. It's actually it's a joy to play because it's so fast and it's immediately there. The size is much better than usual tiny keys. 
Um, so I, I immediately felt comfortable with it. It's a capacitive keyboard that means um, your skin um, becomes part of the circuit and um, it doesn't work with, for example, with a pen. Like even if it's metal, it seems to be metal here. So it must be some... Um, maybe the water inside your, um, inside your skin, your body, makes, um, closes a circuit and um, that's why it's, um, that's basically how it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot it right. I think it's the same like um, our mobile phone displays. They work the same. They have a grid and if you like touch it, there's a change in electricity. So an, an, an XY grid and here it's like a different pattern. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think it's the same technology. Even this one is like medieval, like really, really old school. But seems to be cheap enough to um, to be put in this machine, which costs 300, by the way. So it's it's a really um, competitive priced machine. What we see, we see the modulation matrix. We see the um, little preset display, um, paraphonic button, glide as usual, digital oscillator. I come to I come back to that later. Analog filter, three types: low pass, band pass, high pass. Cycling envelope, which is very interesting. Um, classic envelope. But both um, the cycling and the classic, they don't have a, um, a specific release parameter. Decay and release is always combined, which for me is totally perfect. I don't need a, um, a specific release one. Standard LFO, arpeggiator and sequencer. Shift button for um, blue shape. Basically, it's one, two, three, four functions which you can reach via shift. So that's totally fine octave for the keyboard and then down here hold button holds what you dialed in right um, four modes for the arpeggiator and then there's this spice dice and bend let me just get this spice and dice out of the way um, if you have a sequence I just start the sequencer and it's just going up and I do a, a C minor can put randomness to it. Spice means the amount of randomness. Dice just gives in a seed of randomness. So if I have this simple sequence and I put some and I roll the dice, um, it's going to change the sequence, but not the tone, only the control voltages. does impressively little basically um, so I just want to get this out of the way it's again it's a random feature um, which for me is random again but I could imagine uh, throwing in a sequence or an arpeggio on my live set and just have it like going all the time on time on my whole set and just rolling the dice um, from time to time makes it more interesting yes but still, music is not random. So thanks for this feature. It's a good idea, but um, that's it about this. Okay, um, filter, arpeggio, digital oscillator, the keyboard. Um, let's get back to the modulation matrix. Um, as you can see on the left, there are five modulators, which is the second envelope, envelope, LFO, pressure, and the key. Um, key basically and ARP is um, a control voltage, it's not a control voltage but it works like one, um, which depends on how where the tone is, what you actually play, so you can use that for the filter for example because it's self-resonant, so you can play the resonance from the filter, let me just quickly do that to show it to you, so I go to the key and then to cut off and then um, the 100 amount, open up the resonance, and now I can play it. Then there's this 
pressure. I, I come from the end to the beginning, to the second envelope. So the first one was the keys down here, then the pressure. Um, it's a bit misleading because um, it's not actual pressure. I think the manual, even the very well written manual, read it guys, um, says, even mentions like aftertouch, um, which is definitely not. What it does is uh, measuring the amount of skin which is on the keyboard. So it doesn't do, it, it, it is pressure in a sense that if you push it harder, then the skin becomes a little bit bigger, the skin area. Um, but it's definitely not aftertouch in the, in, in the classic sense of a keyboard. So I made this little patch here where I put the pressure parameter on the VCO part 3, the shape from the models, modal synth. So you see when I go down with my finger, I can modulate that tone. It also it works. Um, it, maybe it's easier to understand if I put it on the pitch, but just only a tiny little bit, like one percent. And this parameter is polyphonic, so. This is um, about the pressure, which is important to know because it really is not anything like aftertouch. So LFO is just normal, nothing special. Um, can be, of course, everything can be synced. Um, the classic envelope is also just a classic envelope, nothing special. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit weird that um, it's it, it's the same envelope for the amp and for the filter, which is not weird by itself. But um, obviously they. They want you to use the, um, the envelope more on the filter and have the amp been driven by the gate. So it's just like immediately on and off instead of like doing it on an envelope, which is much more natural in my opinion. The spice and dice parameter are heard much better if you switch off the amp mod. Maybe that's why. Then the cycling envelope um, is in, in the envelope mode. It has three modes. The envelope mode is just a classic envelope, and you can you have to root it somewhere. It's not rooted to anything from the beginning. So I just put it on the sustain from the amp mod, and it's so clever. If I want to assign something. Um, on, the, on one of the three assign rows, um, it's actually that clever that I didn't get it in the beginning. I needed to look it, to look it up in the manual. It's basically you just push the button and uh, you push the assign knob and move a button and then it's immediately assigned. It's like more easy than that, it's not possible. And uh, it was too easy. I, I'm, like, I'm used to like scrolling through menus and having like this long list of parameters which you can choose. No, no, it's just like this and it's the only way to do it. Thank you, Atoya. Thank you. So I put the um, cycling envelope to the sustain um, parameter from that sound. Switch the sustain off. So when I put in the envelope, it's making it lou louder, basically, because the sustain is when I hold the tone, then it's the hold phase. Anyway. Um, in its normal envelope mode, it's just a simple envelope. If it's on the run mode, it um, suddenly becomes an LFO with a very interesting shape. Again, press the tone. So what it does, it just opens up the sustain knob, right? It's, it automatically open it, opens it up.
and it just runs. Like it's going all the time and in loop mode it always starts once it gets a gate signal. So the modulation is always new. It always starts from, uh, starts from the beginning. The best thing is, the modulators can modulate themselves. So I can put the LFO, for example, on this fall parameter, which made this wow wow sound, and automate this. I use a sign row 2, press it, fall time, and just, I think it's just a tiny bit. Um, this can be synced, by the way, to an external clock or to some BPM. And uh, that was the random LFO. Um, by the way, every knob gives out CCs, the manual says so, and through um, USB it can be powered through your computer and you can program every knob in your DAW and um, automate this shit. All right, so those five modulators being able to modulate themselves and uh, to modulate any parameter on, on here. So even the glide, the um, arpeggiator speed, anything can be automated. Can the arpeggiator speed? Yeah, of course, the rate. Yeah, sure it can. Um, makes this incredibly powerful. Seriously, it's really powerful. You just have to push buttons. You don't need no cables um, into any modules. It's, um, yeah, I must say I really like it. So this was just the, this was the, the functions around the core. And the core is the oscillator, which has um, very many different models, starting from the basic wave, which we heard. That's the saw. Before that was the square. Um, a super wave. Which can be detuned, like it's additional waves around the main one which are detuned. Perfect for those, um, you know what I mean. And those work for sinus as well, like all, uh, um, different waveforms, sinus, triangle, square, and so. So on the sinus, it's suddenly a beautiful tone. Isn't it? Wave table, very aggressive sounding. 16 tables where in each table you can basically morph through different waveforms so you can like really look after the best ones. Very aggressive. 
harmonics, which is sinus and um, additional sine waves on top of the basic one. Okay, I need to show you the wavetable as well, sorry. Can all be automated, right? Um, wavetable harmo, and then um, mutable instruments um, gave out their digital um, oscillator models as open source an open source license, and they allowed Arturia to to use them. So um, after those, which I showed you, the ones from Mutable Instruments start, which is a K plus strong um, algorithm. Can also be very short, like very um, string. Of course, it's a string theory. I will still have this pitch bend in here. Couple strong. Virtual analog from Mutable, which is a bit different because there's another oscillator which you can like tune in. I switch off the pressure because it's weird. Oh, Aturia. Um, please um, put the shift button, if I press the shift button, then please allow me to just go to zero or the maximum value because it's like really difficult to, to find it, it takes so much time. Um, do it the electron way, just use shift for jumping to the, to the main values. Next update, please, thank you very much. Free jazz. Um, wave shaper. Folding waves. Um, two operator FM. Let me start a new patch. which is a kind of a grain idea, um, which I didn't get because it's not related to wave, but chords, I come back to that later. Speech, which I don't, um, it can talk and Daft Punk on, I don't know, destroy, destroy Daft Punk var variation. Will be very interesting. I don't, don't. I didn't get it in the time I had. Um, and the model, model.
So those are the models. Um, going through the analog filter, you might have recognized that I don't use the analog filter that much. Um, I figured the, the oscillators themselves are so different from each other, the models, that um, I don't have the, 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 I don't feel like I need to filter too much. In a musical context, it will be different, of course, because the band pass is, uh, is a very um, important tool to just like light on, have light in one spectrum and just put it there and all the rest is um, around it. Um, the filter was very clever to build in here just for being there, just for giving it a little bit of grit and analog feel that's not a harsh one, but it rounds it a bit. Um, from time to time, I felt a bit like it's, a, it's an OP-1 with a filter at the end, and that's a very good thing. Yeah, the, the thing I didn't show you was the quartz oscillator. It's really, um, it's, it's really a chord starting by an octave. Fifth. Okay, I, I just do something with it, right? Instant house. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So basically that's the machine. I could um, show you a little bit more presets that I programmed or I would just um, go to the verdict. Yeah, so there's even a, there's a full-blown sequencer in there with swing and everything you need, but um, I, I didn't have the time to get it. It was so much fun to just play around with it, I didn't need it. Actually, I'm going to sequence it with my Octa track, so I don't need an internal sequencer, but I'm sure uh, it's going to be it's, it's powerful, but I don't know, to be honest. The Apeggiator is um, a very classic stand-up one with different features and this um, Spice and Dice feature, but um, it's just an Apeggiator. The sound source and the modulation matrix is so powerful in itself that this is a very welcome... This is like a cherry on the cake, but the cake itself is so incredibly um, well-designed. Actually, I'm... I, I would go that far and say it's the best synth Arturia ever made for 300, not like in general. It costs 300, but the price isn't important. It's so, um, I'm very happy to have it, actually. Mm -hmm. Come, I'm going to show you a little bit more presets, right? This one. Dr. Dre would love it 10 years ago. <clears throat>
just a tip here it plays um, fifths and if you put fifths on top of each other Sounds pretty cool. Don't put um, minor or major chords on top of each other because that doesn't fit. Um, 